this bath here. Whoops. So, this is part three of the novel I'm writing, and it is also my third attempt to film this video. So, if you haven't seen part one and part two, go do that. Uh, but if you have, then I'll read you the rest of part three, starting from this slide. So, nearly one year later, the four older kids decided to go out to a school dance. Martha and Frances were afraid to let Zillow go because of her chronic illness. But Zillow promised that she was fine. She did feel fine until she got there. When she did, she was greeted by Oliver and the daughter of the Swanee family, Eva. They poured her a drink of milk. And almost right away, she began to feel drowsy. She tried to enjoy herself, but was making her feel sick. She sat down in the hallway. When Kim came looking for her, Zillow just told her that she was too ill to participate. Kim was really annoyed. Zillow, you promised everyone you were feeling okay, she said impatiently. I was when I got here, I promise you, Zillow responded. Kim asked when exactly she started feeling sick, and Zillow explained that it was only after she drank the milk the Swannies gave her. Kim looked gobsmacked. Zillo, why did you take it? God knows what those Brits could have put in that. That was stupid. I can't stay here. I'm feeling faint. Zillo complained. Kim gathered Roland and Adam and tried to walk Zillo back to her home. On the way, however, Zillo pleaded to sit down. They found a haystack. Unfortunately, though, that haystack was located out. Her sons to escort them out. The next day they seen Martha at the fountain. They asked with a snarl on the face how Zillow was doing. Martha responded, She's okay now. No thanks to your mother. Kim and Evelyn sat to their faces. You've taken it too far. You're the worst. And Zillow said behind their back, Nobody who comes out of me will be like that, or pity you, or like you, or anything. However, she still had quite a while to go before she could prove that. Between 1927 and 1953, a lot of things happened. For example, Jayla and Adam got married in 1936. Kim gave up her first baby in 1937. And Evelyn and Roland got married a few years later. Jayla did not become a mother until 1946. She had a little girl named Fern. Evelyn followed in 1947 with a son named Landon. And Kim finally had a second baby in 1948 named Nick. Their goal was to never let the Swannies find out about them or any of their younger siblings. But knowing the Swannies, that did not happen. In 1950, while her younger daughters Mallory and Alison were sleeping, she let her little explorer Fern go and play in the village. She was keeping a really close eye on them through the window, only turning away for five minutes. But that was all it took. The Swannies pulled her aside and told her exactly what their aunt had told Jilo 31 years before. When Fern came back home, she did not really want to speak, but she did try and take her baby sister's place on her mum's knee. Without really, without knowing, Gino asked, What's wrong, Angel? Then, Fern's eyes teared up. Please do not call me Angel, she sobbed. Gino was concerned because she always called Fern and Mallory her angels, and it had never had a, been a problem. When she asked why, Fern explained, The Swannies told me that... I will be an angel soon because of spirits. Zillow instantly picked her up and looked at Adam who muttered, Are you kidding me? Fern promised that she was not kidding. Adam headed right out the door, slamming it a little harder than he'd intended to as he left. Zillow reassured Fern that they'd said the same thing to her when she was even younger than her and it wasn't real. But meanwhile, Adam got a hold of the entire Swami family. He angrily explained... Fern is only four years old and I've told you to stay out of our life at least 12 times. What part do you not get? Oliver entered the room and said with a cackle, Oh, we understand, but we don't care. You and Zillow probably have about three or four more kids you just won't tell us about. Adam thought of Mallory, Alison, and the baby they were due to have, to have in seven weeks. Trying his utmost best not to let anything slip, he said, Well, even if we do, it's none of your business. Let me tell you a thirteenth time, you are not a part of Fern's life. He left the house. 
He needed them that he would never get through to them. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching once again. Leave a comment down below what you think and I will see you in part 4. I can't guarantee it will be up tomorrow but it will be up very soon. Bye!